I think we all love a good comeback story, and that's exactly what's happening for Alex Maton at Muhlenberg. You may remember the name, played for the Parkland Trojans, or rather through the javelin there for the track and field team, and is excelling now at the college level, and maybe even more so than he expected. Megan Caffrey has more on that story. In Muhlenberg, senior Alex Maton's very last Centennial Conference Championship, he earned gold on his very last throw, touching down at 196 feet 9 inches, outthrowing Franklin and Marshall's Tanner Ayersman. Kind of at that point, I knew either being the last thrower, I knew, okay, I'm either going to win it or I'm going to lose it, or come in second at least. Um, kind of just came, went up and was like, all right, I'm done, let's go. And just sprinted down the runway and just chucked it. And then I saw the throw, I'm like, I heard my coach, I'm like, I knew, knew it. And it was fun. It was a good time. After a promising freshman campaign in which Alex PR'd, setting the tone early for his collegiate career, he was delivered a setback. Alex underwent two surgeries, including Tommy John, sidelining him for his entire sophomore season. It was pretty painful. Uh, I couldn't feel my pinky and my ring finger on the right side. So I had to go get cut open again. And so it kind of set me back a little bit, but not too much. Um, but then I had to sit through all of basketball, which that was painful to watch because we didn't have that great of a season. So that was pretty painful. And then sitting through track, which knowing like I could do some things. Alex wasn't the only one who knew he was capable of a comeback. His throwing coach, Andy Furringer, a former Division I All-American at the University of Virginia, went through Tommy John surgery himself after his own freshman season. I told him that this is a beautiful beginning because Tommy John surgery not only tests you as a person, tests you as an athlete, tests your trust, right? It tests your trust for me as a coach. And since I've gone through it, I had such great trainers at the University of Virginia and I have my protocols. I was, I was just that athlete. I saved all of my workouts. For him to go through that surgery, come back, uh, mentally, personally, more mature and athletically, and then to do what he did is amazing. It's amazing. Alex came back his junior year finishing fifth, but for him, that was the second time he had finished a season below where he was seated. So this year, coming in seated first, he knew exactly how he wanted to finish. I wrote myself an email, I'm like, all right, this is unacceptable, you can't have this happen again. Like, it changes now. And I read it before, because uh, I knew I wanted to look back at it, kind of like give myself a little bit of motivation. And just a simple email was everything he needed. Kind of brought me to the fact that this is my last one. I, I wasn't guaranteed more. I wasn't guaranteed Nationals. I wasn't guaranteed Widener. Um, this could have been my last meet. That was perhaps my last throw ever. So I had to go. For, I had to go for it. The top 20 javelin throwers will move on to the NCAA tournament. Alex will head off to Widener University this Thursday, looking to secure his spot to advance. Right now, he's right on the bubble, sitting with the 20th best mark. However, with last chance meets happening all throughout this week, he's looking for one last opportunity to guarantee his spot. Widener's going to be so much fun. I have my coach throwing with me. There's about three other 70 meter throwers throwing. Uh, Rob Kondo from Moravian, who I've gotten to know over the four years, and then another kid from Widener who's throwing that actually bumped out of the top 20. Um, I know he's coming for that spot too, so it's going to be a lot of fun and just icing on the cake at this point. At Muhlenberg College, I'm Megan Caffrey for Two Sports.